Hello YouTube and welcome back to another thrilling installment of the Firebird Resto. Now, something has changed since you last were here. Um, it wasn't meant to happen, honest, but it did. So, I think we'd better have a look down there. And down we go. Very slowly so you don't feel seasick. Oh, the engine's in. Now then, this wasn't meant to happen, honest, but when the uh, filming ended at the end of the last video, the battery on the camera was flat, and I just thought to myself, I wonder how easily this engine's going to go in, and how much embarrassment it's going to cause me as I look like a feeble old man trying to hoik it into place. So I picked it up, held it over the relevant mounting at the front, dropped it down and it went straight in. 30 seconds, 45 seconds, under a minute, just plonk. So I then considered, should I take it back out again and show you the process of me putting it in? However, I have learnt, whilst making these videos, that when you decide to film something, it never goes how it's meant to do. Something always goes wrong, something doesn't line up. And off camera, everything just works fantastically. And that's what happened here. So, I decided that as it was in, it's staying in. So I bolted up the engine mounts. The front one's loose because the exhaust will eventually go on there. Bottom mounts in. And whilst I was there, obviously I had the oil lines connected to the underside of the engine anyway. So the return and the feeder connected, the one to the rocker cover clearly isn't because it has to wait for the top end of the engine to go in. So there it is. I have nothing to tell you about the process of fitting the engine. It really was a straight drop in. In fact, fitting the rear mounting plates probably took 15 minutes compared to actually getting the engine in place. So it's in, it's not coming back out to so I can film it. You haven't missed much, to be honest. A 45 second clip. So we're going to move on from there. I've still not been able to get hold of my bike bench, so the next couple of videos, sadly, I think I'm going to be on my knees with you down next to me at floor level, which is uncomfortable, unpleasant, and not at all what I wanted. But sometimes life isn't amenable. So there you go. So later on today, I think, we shall continue building up both sides of the engine. I'll come back to the electrics because I'm waiting for some parts. In fact, I'm waiting for quite a lot of parts. Um, so basically the next video, or I should say the rest of this video, will deal mainly with peripheral bits and pieces, bolting on the odd bit until the uh, box of goodies, or several box of goodies, arrive and then we can really get stuck in again. So, let's have a look and see what we're going to do for the rest of today. Right, I've fitted the kickstart quadrant, which I've got this stop. I've greased the shafts where the cover's going to go. I've also put a small amount of grease on all the mating surfaces where teeth are, just to provide a little bit of lubrication. I will be turning the, o the engine over a lot before it ever runs, so the oil should circulate perfectly well. But it's just, you know, just what I do. There's probably no good reason for it, but it's just what I do. The cover has a new gasket, stuck down on one side, greased on this side. I think everything's in there. I hope it is, because we're going on. So, with any luck, that should fit back over there. Let 
I'll just get my soft tapping stick. A bit of gentle. Change of tone. Get a bit of sealant there to be got rid of when I'm done. But anyway, I won't do that now. So, just got to remember where all the screws went. Now, that one definitely went up there because that holds the, uh, the wire from the points. I know that one's there. Uh, a bit slightly undone to put the points wire through. Anyway, I'll, I'll bring you back when I've done the uh, screws because basically I'm just going to locate which ones are which and screw them up, which doesn't make for riveting viewing. Right, gear change next. I've tapped on our little cast log, which I can't get it wrong, thankfully, because it's on a castle-shaped cutting, so it matches perfectly. And then there's a tiny little grub screw, which goes in there. There we are. Tighten that up. And then our return spring's got to fit over like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure how that's going to go. I'll turn you off for a second and have a look. My line of attack, and I've no idea if it's right or wrong, I haven't looked in the manual. So here's a top tip. Look in the manual first, don't fanny about like me. But if I, if I attach that like that so it's held in by its cup loosely, that's got to go there, and then that one's got to come up there. So I'm hoping that with a bit of brute force and ignorance, like that, well, we're halfway there. Let me get something better to grip this with. Right, so that's where I left it, basically. I'm going to use a screwdriver to put it into place, which I think it is. So if I now do that up, that should be in position. Crossed over, trapped, trapping that, which is held by the thing. That's it. Good. Right, not as bad as I thought. So that leaves the kickstart, which we shall look at next. Uh, is this partially in place? I put the filler plug in as well, just to stop bits dropping in the gearbox. Now, the reason I've had to do it this way is to show you how awkward this is. With the metal plate, with it put, start again. I put the spring in place, hook the uh, curved end round to stop, then put the metal plate onto the shaft, tapped it onto the shaft using a hollow tube to make sure it's properly seated, and then got a hold of the uh, curved end with a pair of small mole grips twisted it round. Now, I found, and there's no guarantee that you'll be as uh, cat-handed as I am, but I found it was really quite difficult to get into place. So with that pulled round, I then had to use 
the screwdriver as a lever to squeeze it behind because the, co the coil bound spring doesn't leave much space for the hook to go around and it needed a bit of additional persuasion with, with the lever whilst holding the pressure on with the mole grips. So hopefully when I now release these mole grips it will be in place and in tension. <coughs> ha ha. Nope, looks to have worked. So there we are, we're on the uh, tag of the Kickstarter, it's in the proper tension, we're around there. Good stuff. So next it's the points and the wiring, which I'll have to go and look at next, which will be on the bench. Uh, and I'll have to try and remember what was in there. Can't remember what that was. I'll just have to look, can't remember. Okay, points next. Just before we do the points, so I forgot, we've got the taco drive up the front here, which I might have to get in your way a little bit for. The gasket's already on. A bit of grease on this side for where it's going to sit on the gasket. And a... It should go in there. It should fit on a slot in the oil pump. But it's not, so let me have a fiddle because I'm going to have to cut across you. Right, took a little bit of wiggling to get seated. But there it is down, gasket, plate, locking cap, not cap, but uh, tab, and it just screws in place. It's very difficult to do this without getting in your way, so I'm really sorry. But Anyway, there it is. I'll tighten those two, knock the tabs over. You don't need to see that. Okay, the uh, taco drive is in place. Pretty straightforward, really. Let me just find my right spectacles. Which I have lost. Okay. I'll do this with the wrong spectacles. Right, uh, auto advance unit. Unmarked, very very minor polishing but it is very very minor. Springs are good, so that's going back on via its long thin bolt and I've just suddenly realized that I didn't show you the oil seal that fits in the case that, that goes into. Okay, you'll find it in the manual, there's an oil seal in the inner case you just fitted to protect that which I forgot to show you but hey ho. Such is life. Then our points plate. Still got its little uh, fibre pads that you oil to keep it all lubricated. It's obviously been adjusted because the, there are marks on the screws. So it has been done. But the points are in very good condition. I've cleaned the faces. No pitting, no, no peaks, nothing. So I'm going to reuse them. Now, you can't time all of this up until everything's built up, top ends up, so we do crank positioning, all that sort of stuff. So all this will be loosely fitted at the minute until we can get everything in the right position. Um, and then, just as another point out of interest, I was looking at these, and it struck me, given it's the pistons rise and fall together. Why do you need two sets of points? Because you could use wasted spark. It, I don't understand it. It seems unnecessarily complicated. Like, like the Harley Davidson I'm doing, which is on another series of videos of mine. And lots of uh, two cylinder cars I've worked on. One set of points, just waste the spark into the exhaust. So why the BSA and Triumph, they did the same. I don't know. Anyway. It's too late to worry now. They're not going to change anything now. 40 years on, are they? So anyway, they're going back on. That's going back in. It should all work together once it's timed up. So let's go fit it. 
Right, I'll try not to get in your way. So the auto advance unit just goes in through the oil seal. I don't think it needs to be in any particular place just yet till we time it up so that just will get loosely attached. And in our points plate, which I've left on the bench, we'll move from the bit before. It just goes on and is secured by uh, two screws. Let's get that on like that. And then our lead comes up like that. It gets trapped in there. And then it gets fed out. A hole at the back somewhere which I'll have to locate. So I'm just going to put the screws in, find a hole for this, there's a rubber grommet that goes through it and that's all we can do here till we start timing things up. Right, moving on to the uh, drive side. We need to reassemble the first part of our clutch. So we have the center piece with its washer which is in reusable condition. And then we have the slightly messier process then of standing all our little balls up in rollers, as you say, up in here. So first of all, we need some grease to stick them down. Because this can be a little tricky, as we shall see. So I'll probably screw it up first time round. Right. And then our little balls, rollers, don't like to calling them balls. Should sit upright all the way around this. So rather than let you watch me try and stick these little rollers down, I'll bring you back when they are in fact in place. Right, that's them all in place. So then, and this is the fun bit. We've got to drop this over and trap them all it doesn't look possible at the minute I'll bring you back again I just went for it because if you get it wrong they end up going everywhere so anyway basically you drop them over there's all your balls in place, rotating nicely. So if you want to then move it, you're going to have to hold it upright or else obviously everything will fall down the inside. So we shall move that to one side. Oh, by the way, just to reiterate, all these are the original parts, I haven't changed anything because they're all in excellent condition. There's no marking on the clutch basket at all. Teeth are all brilliant. All the little rollers were in uh, excellent condition. Again, it just ties in with not having done very many miles. So it's all original stuff reused. So we'll move that over there for a the minute and go and get our sprocket. Grab our chain, which is also in exceptionally good condition. And our front sprocket, which of course has the spacer washer, which we mustn't forget because all of this is going to have to go on as one unit. Again, the teeth are excellent. No hooking, pitting, marking, nothing. All really good. Right, and I shall bring you back when we assemble that. And there we are. So that will then stay together, lifted by the centre, and placed onto both shafts at the same time. The reason being that that will spin round that, thereby allowing me to align it all up in one go. So I just need to find the... Uh, Woodruff key that fits in that centre and we're ready to go. Right, the, with the sprocket on and tightened the next thing is the cover which has a gasket obviously 
an, an oil seal, which counterintuitively looks like it's the wrong way around. But it is right because the, the spring side is sitting in the, uh, the chain case, which is where the oil is. So that looks a bit weird to begin with, that is correct. So hopefully that, oh no it won't. That should just push out. Okay, um, I'm just going to warm that very slightly with a hot air gun. To see if I can get that to move. Right, bit of uh, warmth off the hot air gun and it just fell out. So the new one should just press in. And given the alloy is bound to be slightly warm. Oh, I've not gone too far there. Get that back down in there. There we go. Lovely. Sitting flush. Good. Flush now. I haven't cooked it there. Right. Still not perfectly flush. Let's do that again. Shall we? Let's see if this time I can actually, in fact, let's do it properly. Go mad and use the right tool. That's that for a bonkers idea. And then we know. Just get it started with my hand. There we go. And then we know it'll be flush, won't we? There we go. Perfect. Yeah, you're not using the right tool for the right job, is there? Right, for the rear chain, I could have gone for something really expensive, O-ring, X-ring, blah, 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 blah. But I haven't, because this firebird is always likely to be a plaything. And therefore, there's no point spending loads of money on it. So I got a Wassel which is a very well-known British make. I have no idea whether the chain's made in Britain, but no idea, let's see if we can find anything on it. No, can't see anything. But it's 5 8 by 3 8 by 110 links, which is what we want. And it was only £27. So for me, that is a very, very good deal. As I say, this firebird ain't going to be doing thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. So, why waste the money, basically? So, I'm now going to use the chain to secure the sprocket, to tighten up the sprocket nut. Right, on the drive side, I've refitted the sprocket, put the washer behind it, tie washer behind it, and the lock nut. And to do up the lock nut, I fitted a new chain. I did this off camera because it involved me getting quite close to it. It would have been difficult for you to see it, but anyway. I then jammed the two bits of chain together using a screwdriver, which locked the sprocket, which enabled me to tighten up the nut. So I just need to knock over the tab washer now, and I will leave the... the uh, chain exactly where it is. Now I'll bring you across so you know what I'm talking about. So there's the chain. Top run of the chain, bottom runs underneath obviously. I protected the frame with a bit of cloth while I was doing it to make sure I didn't scratch anything. And I will now just leave the chain there like that until we're ready to fit the back wheel. There's no point taking it out again. It's not going to do any harm as long as it's well protected. It's sitting on cardboard, the chain itself is sitting on cardboard, as we shall see, like that. So it's not picking up any extraneous dirt and muck. And uh, when the cover's fitted and the back wheel goes on, we can just connect the chain up and be done with it. Right, so we need to fit the cover, which will be 
over the sprocket there, which will be the next job. And then once that cover's on and everything's sealed up, we can fit the uh, drive chain, primary drive chain, front rear sprockets, clutch basket, the alternator when it comes. Well, basically, that'd be that side of the engine built up. So things are moving apace. I'm very happy.